Hello all. Welcome again to our NPTEL on nonlinear and adaptive control. I am Srikant Sukumar from Systems and Control IIT Bombay. So as always we want to be motivated by this very very exciting uh, background image that we have. Uh, we want to eventually be able to figure out how to design algorithms that drive systems uh, for autonomous motion such as this yeah. uh, so without delaying any further we continue with our lectures all right so the last time we looked at a couple of myths and temptations which uh, sort of plague typical asymptotic analysis right and after that, we moved on to uh, some vector and matrix norms, basically uh, giving us the ability to sort of uh, deal with uh, objects that evolve on non-linear spaces, right? So we defined uh, norms on vector spaces and therefore gave them a structure, which is that of a non-linear space. Right? We also defined uh, what such norms are we looked at a you know few examples of these norms right? so after that we also spoke about the matrix induced norm basically a norm that can be obtained by using a vector norm in order to construct a matrix norm right and this is called the matrix induced norm right right so Finally, we of course saw, you know, what is this non-linear space structure and, uh, you know, uh, what is rather comforting for us is to sort of uh, see that whatever spaces that we are usually going to be dealing with in this course are in fact uh, going to be non-linear spaces, right. So now we continue and um, with our lecture, so we are on lecture number three right and what we want to do is we want to look at a little bit more detail into the norms that we have constructed until now yeah so it is very important that we um, get a better feel for the norms that we have designed uh, one of the key uh, things in this direction is to actually prove that the norms we have defined are in fact are indeed norms you know valid norms as per the definition all right so if you see the definition contained four aspects one is the non-negativity okay then we had the notion of the norm being zero only when the vector itself is zero then we had the scalar multiplication property and then finally the very key and very important triangle inequality property all right so we want to uh, prove this uh, the fact that this infinity norm and also a particular p norm are valid norms yeah? just to see how such proofs would go right so let's see first we have this you know infinity norm all right which is essentially the largest component of any vector that is given to us right so if i have any vector in rn right so if i so in this case, we are assuming that X is in Rn, right? We are assuming that X is in Rn and we are computing the infinity norm by taking the largest component of this or largest element of this vector X. Right? So since it's a finite dimensional vector, this is very easy, right? Remember, we talked about the notion of supremums and maximums also last time. So if the set is finite, computing a, you know, maximum is very easy. Yeah, just have to compare, right? We also saw a couple of examples in this direction, in fact. All right. So let's look at the proof. So the first is the fact that 
the infinity norm is greater than or equal to zero is very obvious why because we are comparing absolute values of the components all right we take every component we compute its absolute value and notice that this quantity is always positive right so since this quantity is always positive the maximum of this quantity also has to be positive right well non negative right so if there is element zero right then obviously the absolute value is also zero right however this is always non negative right so that's rather critical and since we are taking a maximum over non negative numbers the output is also non negative so the first requirement is very easily satisfied the second requirement is that it has to be zero if and only if the vector itself is zero right and that's what i have written here i have just written the statement but it should be obvious that you know if i sort of try to expand a little bit right so this if i have this guy right if i if i know that the infinity norm is zero then what am i saying i'm saying that max of every element is zero right all right if the max of every element is zero remember the absolute value is in fact non negative right so if 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 the maximum of all absolute value of xi is zero then the only way this is possible is that x i is zero right on the other hand if i start from here and i'm given that x i itself is zero then it is obvious that absolute value of x i is zero and this means that max of absolute x i is zero right and that's it this is the infinity norm so we have very easily proven that the infinity norm being zero is equivalent to each component being zero that is the vector itself being zero all right the third property that is the scalar multiplication property is rather obvious it's nothing to do because again you have an absolute value right so the alpha will come out here right and the alpha can be pulled here right so the scalar multiplication property is very very straightforward i don't so i'm not really elaborating on it right now we come to the rather critical triangle inequality property and as always whichever is the critical property is what is difficult to prove yeah right so always uh, more challenging yeah so let's look at this and yeah? let's try to do this so uh, in order to prove that you have a triangle inequality property i need to show that norm of x plus y the infinity norm of x plus y is less than equal to infinity norm of x plus infinity norm of y okay so that's the first step that's the last step all right now i'm just writing the definition here the infinity norm of x plus y is simply max over 1 to n absolute value of xi plus yi okay now it should be obvious to you that since i'm computing the max of xi plus yi for some k this is the max right so for some k this is in fact not less than equal to but you know you can even say this is exactly equal to and right? this is i can even say this is exactly equal to so what i can do is i can simply erase this right the infinity norm that is the max of xi plus yi is in fact exactly equal to absolute value of xk plus yk for some k right because after all i am taking a max right so it has to be uh, true for some i equal to k okay and that's what this is right now by the triangle inequality property of the absolute value right so the absolute value actually satisfies the triangle inequality this is very well known right i am not going to prove it easily verifiable also right so from the triangle inequality on the absolute value property i get that absolute value of xk plus yk is less than equal to absolute value of xk plus absolute value of yk 
again for some k in 1 to n okay for some k in 1 to n all right all this y this quantity is in the left by the way so i started with an equality again an equality now i have an inequality but all the while this quantity remains on the left hand side okay so this is how we do a lot of inequality proving all right so get used to it this is how we do a lot of inequality we start with a quantity and keeping this on the left hand side we keep doing inequalities equalities and inequalities and so on and so forth yeah usually one directional yeah if we are doing less than equal to it will always be less than equal to if it is greater than equal to it will always be greater than equal to on every step yeah or equal to it will never switch between less than and greater than because then you cannot actually prove anything okay so this is a very standard method of proving things all right so this is xk plus yk for some k in 1 to n and this should be obvious that this is less than equal to max from 1 to n xi absolute value and max from 1 to n yi in absolute value right because if i take any xk arbitrary for some arbitrary k in 1 to n and i take its absolute value it has to be smaller than if i take the max over all possible such case which is what this is right and it's now evident that this quantity is x infinity right and this quantity is y infinity all right so we started with this we did a lot of inequalities and we have proven that x plus y infinity is in fact less than x infinity plus y infinity all right so that's sort of the end of the proof okay so we've proven that the infinity norm as defined satisfies all the norm properties and therefore is a valid norm yeah all right great okay so now we want to do something very similar all right we want to do something very very similar for our uh, two norm all right so let's see if we can in fact do something like this yeah so uh, how is the two norm defined so we are not of course dealing i mean it's similar proofs can be done for all p norms but we are focusing on these infinity norm and two norm because these are rather important norms so the two norm is the like i mentioned last time is a euclidean distance the way we know it the way we know how to measure distance right and the infinity norm is of course you know rather important norm yeah so so we um, i mean of course you can do the same exercise for all other norms yeah so i am not going to do it for all possible norms right so it's defined as summation over 1 to n absolute value of xi square and then i take a square root okay so i immediately very very you know pass in passing i say that the first three properties are obviously satisfied so i mean i, I will still write a little bit here now okay i'm still going to write a little bit so if you look at uh, non negativity non negativity that is so this should be sort of evident to you right because again if you look at you are taking square of absolute values so it's a positive quantity then i'm taking summation of this positive quantity then i'm taking a square root of that again a positive quantity all right so great so this is fine yeah this is good right then the next one is that the two norm of x is zero if and only if x itself is the zero vector okay. this is again something that is not too difficult to verify right so if i sort of try to compute you know if i sort of try to um you know write what is the you know square of a two norm then i will get something like x1 square plus x2 square plus x n square and suppose i say that this is zero right then the only way this is possible is that each component is zero yeah it's very easy to argue this right because if na if each comp if any of them is non zero then the outcome is non zero 
Why? Simply because we are only adding things. We are never subtracting anything here. Yeah, nothing gets subtracted here. Only things get added here. Right? So if anything is non-zero, it's definitely going to add something. And this will be not zero. So the only way that norm x2 square is zero is if xi itself is zero, which means that the vector x is zero. Right? And similarly, if, if x is zero, if the vector x is zero, the fact that I mean that is going from this way to this that is given my vector being zero vector then the norm is zero is very very obvious right so the first two properties are this then you have the scalar multiplication property yeah which is that the two norm of alpha x has to come out like this any scalar multiplication has to come out like this now it should be obvious that this guy will expand to square root of summation alpha square xi squared right and this is simply that and so that's it we have proved this property right very straightforward okay which is why i said that they're obviously satisfied but here you go i mean just to be clear we have in fact proved it yeah all right so now the triangle inequality as always our you know key or difficult property if you may yeah so we want to talk about the triangle inequality property Right. So, if you look at the square of the two norm for x plus y, again I have taken the quantity that I want on the left right here, it's going to stay like this. Then this can be expanded or this can be actually written as summation over from 1 to n, i equal to 1 to n, xi plus yi squared. All right. okay now this quantity actually evaluates to this the quantity inside the summation the quantity inside the summation evaluates to this right so let me let me sort of verify if this is the case all right yeah yeah so the quantity inside the summation will actually evaluate to this yeah and now what do i know I know that this quantity right here is less than this guy. Yeah, not difficult to verify, right? Because the two xi yi is only going to reduce xi squared plus yi squared. Yeah, and square makes the signs positive. Right? So the 2xi yi is always going to bring down xi square plus yi square. It's, I mean, it's, uh, you cannot guarantee that 2xi yi is sign definite. That is 2xi yi cannot guarantee, be guaranteed to be positive, right? Therefore, it can be positive, which would be great, right? Yeah, let's see let's see if this is correct let's let's sort of think about this a little bit more carefully i think i said that in um, sort of passing so if i evaluate this this is xi squared plus yi squared plus twice xi yi yeah so i think i should try to populate some of the intermediate steps which would be better so this guy is can i say that this guy is i i don't think this would be quite okay yeah in fact 
how I would say it. Yeah, so this is, uh, I, I would like to sort of rearrange how I say things here. So this is not, you know, sort of completely right, I feel. So what you want to say here is that this is actually less than or equal to xi square plus yi square plus twice xi yi this is what makes sense yeah so this is not completely right so this is there is an additional term here all right all right i hope i hope that is sort of obvious to you yeah i hope that is obvious to you now the rest of the steps i have to sort of rethink this logic will not work anymore so this is now um, I, I would like to work on this term yeah i would like to work on this term and what i would want to claim is that this guy yeah is less than or equal to twice norm x and norm y okay i would like to claim that this is what is happening hmm. all right this is what i would like to claim okay does that make sense because because if that happens if if this is true okay so if um, so let's see if true then uh, this right hand side entire thing becomes uh, actually equal to or less than equal to uh, so if you see this quantity is the 2 norm of x squared and this quantity is 2 norm of y squared so this is actually something like uh, 2 norm of x squared plus the 2 norm of y squared plus twice the 2 norm of x and the 2 norm of y all right all right so now and this is basically equal to norm of x2 plus norm of y2 whole square and my proof is done because if you see on the left hand side i had 2 norm of x plus y square and here i have 2 norm of x plus 2 norm of y whole square so if i remove the squares on both sides my proof is done okay all right all right so now what am i left to prove i am proof left to prove this guy okay all right let's see if we can we'll try to do it if i cannot i will probably show it to you next time all right but but let's give it a shot right now so i have twice summation over i xi and yi on the left hand side all right so which is and the right hand side so this is the lhs the rhs is twice summation over i xi squared 
multiplied by summation over i y i squared and uh, uh, I think I'm missing a square root here so I'm missing a square root all right Ha! Huh. so this does this look very easy obvious hmm this is something that i will have to probably get back to you on hmm? i'll have to think how we will do this proof in a there is some smart use of cauchy schwartz that i can directly do yeah but i don't want to do that yeah i want to do it on this particular case yeah rather than try to employ a general formula okay let's see yeah so uh, you can see uh, that that you know this in the even in the simple proof we sort of uh, get into an interesting uh, sort of turn right it's not that um, it simply goes through like we would want yeah the terms look rather similar yeah the 2xiyi and 2xy look very similar but actually they are very very different looking terms yeah when you expand them so the lhs actually looks something very simple like this the right hand side is this so it's like a you have square root and so on so so i mean how i would think of approaching this is that i will take a square of this right and then i will have terms like sum xi square and summation of yi squared right um, and then i would like to see what happens you know what happens to uh, each of these right so i want to see that uh, how to deal with each of these terms right so because then i'll also have to take a square here in fact a square outside right and if i take a square outside here then i'm left with uh, a square of sum of products right uh, and then i have to sort of correlate these okay then i'll have to correlate this yeah so and and my aim is to sort of uh, just prove that uh, one is smaller than the other so let me actually think this uh, this piece of proof uh, i will actually cover again next time yeah let's not worry about it uh, but the point is uh, you will eventually see that uh, the two norm also is a valid norm yeah you will actually uh, complete this proof we have already verified the first three properties which were rather easy uh, the triangle inequality property of of course is a little bit more complicated to prove uh, so we will look at this proof so after that we uh, want to look at notions of convergence okay so that's what we want to do next time yeah so that's the plan for next time so once we um, understand the notions of norms you know how norms work we want to talk about convergence that is uh, because in order to actually define convergence you need the notion of a norm yeah because otherwise you cannot actually uh, convergence means basically going close to something right so like we discussed the entire idea of going close to a point cannot be uh, easily defined in vector sense if you don't have uh, a norm yeah and so once we have a norm and a norm linear space it's easy to prove convergence all right so that's what we are going to do next time right so uh, so what did we see today all right so um, what we did today is rather basic uh, proofs of uh, which norms are actually you know satisfying uh, these norm properties right so we just get to prove the norm property for one of them right but we looked at uh, how to prove that the infinity norm is actually a uh, norm we are still to see the triangle inequality property for the two norm and of course this is all leading up to um, actually defining convergence cauchy sequence and you know inner product spaces and so on and so forth yeah so convergence is a rather key key property for us uh, which uh, is what we will look at next time all right thank you